Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, the Split Say DIY, and I've been working on basically a, a dream project that I've wanted to do since I basically found out things like Arduino and stuff existed. So first, before we talk about this wiry spaghetti monstrosity that I have on this wonderful TV table here, I'm gonna tell you a little story. So when I was in college, I was majoring in music technology, and I started to feel like I wasn't learning enough uh, to be able to get a job, uh, which was something I was really scared about while I was in college because I was amassing a ton of debt and so I would need to get a job to be able to survive, which is a pretty normal good old American tale at this point. So anyway, I started looking into like other things I could be learning about to try like uh, get more skills, just get mad skills. One thing that I started looking into was like electronics because I, I knew people made like boutique guitar pedals at that point, but I didn't really know anything besides that. And then that's when I found out about the all these like weird like MIDI robots people were making. Uh, specifically this one. It's by this dude uh, in Japan and he uh, makes all these other cool like music robots and but I specifically liked uh, those weird like motor powered things because I thought to myself it'd be really cool to take that concept and make like a robot xylophone uh, because I uh, one instrument I play was xylophone uh, in the sixth grade I went down to the band room because I was bored in study hall I didn't play any band instruments at that point I only played piano and I went up to the band director and like said that and he said oh play the xylophone it's a piano with sticks but there's a lot of percussionists that would probably be offended by that analogy but uh, to a sixth grader like to get the job done and I'm sure as a junior high band director in uh, my school district just trying to get through every day like yeah that is that is what it is and so uh I kind of wanted to make my own and like there's a lot of people that have made robot xylophones or like um, other like motor powered percussion instruments so it's like not an original idea like truly original by any means but it's something I've always wanted to do. Now also in college I just you know it's it's fun in the summer to start like thinking about stuff like that but then you get back into your classes and working like the three jobs that I happen to be working at the time and it's kind of impossible to learn from scratch uh, programming and electronics and all that kind of stuff um, when the school I was at didn't have programs for that first of all. So I abandoned that and just started doing more video stuff. That's how I supplemented my major. But anyway, fast forward a couple of years and I got back into Arduino and doing that kind of thing and here we are today and I finally feel like I'm at a point where I can do my dream robot xylophone project justice. So I've been working on it for the past couple of weeks and I have this lovely plate of spaghetti uh, that we can kind of discuss where I'm at so far. So first off, there were, there's a lot of things to take into consideration, like what motors are you going to use? Uh, how are you going to trigger them? Are you going to use like a SAMD21 baseboard? You're going to go in like a different direction. Uh, I decided to go with Raspberry Pi, um, mainly because I wanted to do more than just receive MIDI data. Because a lot of the Arduino based ones or Arduino style ones, like you kind of hard program the notes that's going to play, which is fine, but I wanted to be able to receive any MIDI data. So that's why uh, a couple weeks back we did the MIDI over UART video. That was something I was doing with this project. So that's why I decided to go with the Raspberry Pi. I just wanted to have a little bit more flexibility with that. I also wanted to write it in Python and have that kind of support. And also I felt that it would be a good contribution to the open source kind of projects out there. The motors I decided on are solenoids. At one point, and this goes sound a little wacky, I had thought about having servos to like have it hit the, the xylophone that way, but I, I've, I've backed off that. Uh, and so now we're going to have solenoids and I've gone with the really, really tiny ones, as you can see here. Let me see if I can figure out what note that is. Yeah, it's so... And I like these because they're they're pretty affordable. They can be powered to five volt, which is important. Uh, they only pull one amp, which is also nice. And since I'm gonna have a lot of them, I'm gonna have 30 at the end of this whole thing, which is insane. And I will be using a separate power supply for that. Don't think I'm gonna be running off the GPIO on the Raspberry Pi. And I just thought they'd be easy to work with um, as far as building a mount as well, uh, which I have started to prototype 
that. And then for the electronics, um, for the prototyping, I'm using a UL2803 IC, which is really easy to like power some solenoids with because it's just the IC. You hook up five volt and ground, and then you have the signal going in on one side, signal coming out on the other to the solenoid, and then you tap it into five volt and it's like super easy. Otherwise you get into uh, transistors and stuff like that, which in the actual iteration of the project, I'm actually going to have a small PCB for each motor, like super, super, super small that has the uh, transistor and um, basically have an individual circuit for each uh, motor so that I'm not running wire to these ICs. I just thought that would kind of keep things neat and then I'll be able to daisy chain five volt like across and I think that will be that'll be good. And then because I didn't want to have to hook up to individual GPIO pins on the Pi, I am using uh, multiplexers, specifically um, MCP uh, 23017s, I'm using two of them. They allow for 16 in and outs, uh, so, and I'm gonna have 30, so I'll use two of those. Uh, there's a really good CircuitPython library for them so that you don't have to do all the like addressing and stuff, it's all taken care of for you. Uh, so I am using that. And then everything else is basically just straight Python. That's the only CircuitPython aspect of it. But what I like on the Pi, I was a little skeptical about CircuitPython on the Pi. I'm sorry. You don't have to use just straight up CircuitPython. You can combine your other Python libraries too, and they play nice. So pretty good. Like I was able to kind of drop in the multiplexer code uh, with the like other code I'd already written, and it was it was fine. So pretty good. And the way that I've prototyped this is like I kind of started off by just like basically doing like a, a blink sketch with one solenoid, making sure I could get it to go up and down over and over again. Then I added in like two solenoids to do that and like alternate. And then I made sure I was reading MIDI data and I showed that, um, sk uh, that piece of code uh, in my MIDI over UART video. And that'll be on the GitHub repo if you want to take a look at that. And then I tried um, triggering the solenoid with like one MIDI input uh, and just kind of grew it out from there. And by doing that, like it made programming it like really easy because I wasn't trying to like attack everything at once. Like I didn't start off by like throwing in the multiplexer code and everything like that. Like I was using individual GPIO pins at first. And then once I knew that was all set with MIDI, then I went to the multiplexer and then here we are. And then after I got one multiplexer, I added in the second one. And that's why I have these two motors off to the side here. They're running on the second multiplexer just so I can test it. So that's the second multiplexer, but you can see like they're, they're working together really nicely. Pretty excited. There is one more part to this because I, I do want it to be able to receive MIDI data and also you could then hook up a MIDI controller and play it live that way too. I also want to have a button for each solenoid as well. Not hooked up to the Pi but rather just acting as a switch to send 5 volt power to trigger the solenoid motor. And I want to do that with arcade buttons. So I will basically lay those out in a piano style um, array so that you can trigger the solenoids. And I, I also kind of want to do that so if like I ever brought it to um, a meetup or a display or a maker fair kind of thing, people would be able to interact with it nicely and also like kids too, like the buttons are pretty friendly like that. So that that's another reason why. And now you're probably like, well, Liz, where are you getting the xylophone? Hold on. <sighs> Luckily, as I said in the sixth grade, they told me a xylophone's a piano with sticks. And that means that they gave me this glockenspiel to practice on. Uh, so yeah, a little percussion. If you ever see something like this, this is actually a glockenspiel. It's not a xylophone. Uh, glockenspiels are small scale uh, and use metal keys. Uh, so this one has 30, 30 notes. Um, and also it has mounts so that if you were in the marching band, like you could wear it as a harness. I never did that, uh, but you, you could if you wanted to. So basically I'm going to be mounting the solenoids so that they sit just over these keys and they'll be able to strike them. Because of the nature of glockenspiels, the mallets you would traditionally use are, would either be acrylic or um, a metal. Uh, ball and so the solenoids are actually perfect because they're a similar metal um, to what you would find on those and that will give this really nice crisp tone uh, which I'm really excited about. It's hard to trigger the uh, glockenspiel right now with a motor just because they have such a short thing and we'll talk about this plastic bit in just one second but I've been able to balance <laughs> and, and it, it's really nice. It's really nice so I'm 
it's it's going to be nice and crisp and really good. There are also in the mallet family, uh, there's the xylophone, which is kind of the catch-all term uh, that's traditionally made out of a, a hard wood, actually. If you see those thick planks, even though they're black, it's actually like a hard tonal wood. There's also the marimba, that's more of a softer wood. You'd use yarn covered mallets with that because otherwise you'd, you'd totally destroy the bars. And that wood is also usually an endangered wood, unfortunately, uh, which isn't too great for the environment. That's also why they're like insanely expensive. And then there's also uh, a vibraphone. Vibraphone is what you have probably heard in jazz music uh, that has a sustain pedal on it that you can pump similar to on a piano sustain to get those nice ringing tones. A vibraphone is probably most similar uh, to a glockenspiel as far as the metal bars go, but you can you use uh, yarn mallets, acrylic mallets. Uh, you don't usually use a metal a uh, based mallet, usually yarn or acrylic, depending on the tone that you're going for. My favorite to play is a marimba using yarn mallets. Like that is like my happy place, but and also the bars are so big, you can get some really nice rolls going and really do some unique things with the music. But I mean, where am I going to go play a marimba? I'm, I'm not. So for now, I'll have to, I'll have to do with the, the robot xylophone. So the mount that I'm working with right now, let me unplug these two motors from my spaghetti breadboard. Uh, so basically I have these two mounts. Uh -huh. uh, and so the uh, motor is able to sit nicely because I have basically two little kind of lips sticking out the bottom and also on the side here so that it squishes it in. And then these particular solenoids have little screw holes on the side, which I didn't realize until I was actually looking over a Adafruit guide for a robot xylophone that they made with solenoids. And I was like, how did they mount theirs? Cause I was like trying to figure out what to do and I was sketching out some ideas. And that's when I saw they have a screw mount and you can buy the screws from McMaster. So I'm probably gonna do that. And so then of course though, if you look at the glockenspiel, there is space between the keys. So I had to get the spacing right and figure out how I was going to have this close enough to the key because that is a challenge with using the smaller one and having the kind of shorter throw but also be kind of like suspended in the air. So that's when I thought it'd be kind of cool to do like a kind of snap fit thing. So basically they can just snap together nicely. And I, I printed these two as supports on the, the edges here, but I'm curious to see if it can print without supports. It, the issue is it's so small um, and that's why I actually made this like kind of dot pattern in the middle so it'll use a little bit less material. I could probably use even less but I want I still want it to be like sturdy enough and so because my concern is that if I don't make it sturdy enough it might bow a bit with all the weight. And then uh, the idea would be that the the PCBs could attach either here or on the back and then the motor will be able to plug in and then we'll also be able to have the circuit for the motor and then just run some little wires to connect power and everything. So I think that will work out well, but we'll see. That's kind of like the next stage of like experimenting with this. But I'm excited that the snap fit is working. Like that's, I think that's kind of cool. It's like Legos for motors. So that's kind of where I'm at with uh, what I think I'm going to call the Xylo Pi. Uh, it's, I'm, I'm really excited so far and it's gone smoother than I thought it would. I think sometimes with our like dream projects, we kind of build them up in our head like, oh, it'll be too much. It'll be so, oh man, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? Like I said, I just took it in little pieces and it's made it go, um, go nicely. It's going to do it for this video. There's going to be, I don't even know how many parts, but a few, uh, documenting this project, uh, and I'm, I'm just really excited. If you like this video, toss me a thumbs up, leave a question or comments down below. In the description, I'll have stuff on GitHub that I've worked on so far for this, and I'll be updating it periodically. So check that out if you want to take a look at any of the code or the circuits or anything like that. And eventually PCB design. And once this is finalized, I'll have the CAD files up along with the Fusion 360 files as well if you wanted to um, edit it for your own use. But uh, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing for more content like this. And until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.